Welcome everyone to another ContraBIM tutorial on ARCHICAD. Uh, today's subject, we are going to be diving into site topography. And I want to walk you through a workflow for how you can generate uh, topography lines from a mesh that you can create just by uh, kind of matching up points to elevation. So uh, typically I'll build topography is kind of the other way around, taking topography lines and then building a mesh from that. This video, we're gonna do this the opposite way. We're going to take our mesh and we're just going to kind of uh, you know create a region here. And what I wanna do is I want to just kind of add some very random points throughout. So we can do some of these with lines. We can just add individual points. We can just kind of really create some different um, elevations here. And I'm gonna show you how we can um, cut this up so that we can generate topography lines from it. So we're just going to add a bunch of little lines here or little points, combo of points and lines. Let's take this here to 3D real quick and we're just going to manually elevate these. So we'll kind of start on the back here. We can kind of bring some of these up. We can have some high spots and some low spots and doesn't really matter too much how we set these. We're just gonna kind of randomize all of this and we're gonna let this workflow kind of do the work here for generating a topography. So if you were creating a mesh, say from like a point cloud and you were doing a similar method like this to go through and kind of cut, you know, to, to model things based on like matching uh, a survey of a point cloud, um, this would probably be the method that I do it. But if you want to actually generate a point or a um, topography lines out of it, then we have to go uh, one step further here. So, because right now this mesh here is really not giving us any nice feedback at all. Um, and so we're gonna go through this process here of, uh, um, you know, determining how to generate those those lines. So over here in kind of my uh, my model inventory bin here, I'm gonna actually pick up this, this uh, morph actually and we're going to be using a morph for generating those these topo lines and what i'll actually do here is we're going to switch to our rectangular mode and we're just going to make a rectangular rectangle shape around this entire uh mesh there so i'm going to grab both of them i'm going to hit f5 so that we have these now selected and we can see um okay let's see where this mesh is it seems like we are maybe a little bit below zero i'm going to take this and we're going to elevate it right to zero. And so that matches kind of the bottom of our topography there. Now, I'm just gonna do a quick copy here. So we are going up 20 feet. So this next step here is I wanna like pick the increment essentially for how high we wanna take this. Now maybe I'll, you know, to reduce the number of lines here, maybe we'll just kind of uh, bring this down so that we're not so drastic. But let's do this, we're gonna take our morph and I'm going to elevate this and spread this just at a one foot spacing. So we're going to copy this all the way up and we're gonna take it to that top point there. So we have 15 um, morph planes that essentially we've created here. Now our next step is we will be using an SEO to operate from our base mesh, which by the way, we would need to have it with some depth here so that it works. It will not work on this met on uh, the, uh, the single plane method. Um, and then next up, we are going to grab all of our morphs. We're gonna add those as targets and we are going to intersect these. So let's go ahead and execute. And you can see now we have created um, some, some topo lines. I'm gonna hit F5 to kind of isolate these. And now you can see how those topo lines have all been worked out. Now, one thing to note is our boundary here is beyond the extents of our mesh, which is exactly how we had modeled that in originally. We can do a little bit of extra work on this to kind of compress these things down and uh, to make this much more easy to work with. So if we're happy with our mesh here, um, you'll notice like if I go in and I'm trying to select like these topo lines here, it's not really working well for me because we have these extents that are beyond the borders. So what we can do again is select all of our morphs. We can right click and we can convert selection to morph once again and see what happens. So now we've taken those, we've essentially removed that SEO that we created them with. And now we are kind of left with these different morphs here. And these are individual planes that we can then work with. So um, let's check this out in 2D real quick. Okay, so there we are. We can see that we still have our original uh, mesh here. So this is one that we can actually delete now. We don't need that anymore. 
Um, do we have two meshes there? Potentially. Um, so, okay, so here we are. We can see all of our different lines. It's uh, kind of interesting here. Some of these morphs actually ended up on the story up above. We were just going to kind of bring these back down using our relink home story. And now we can get that full picture uh, from this view here. The other thing I want to point out is that these uh, morphs, there's two different lines that we have. So we're going to change our uncut line to a solid, and then our overhead line we can use is kind of like that uh, dot and dashed. And so based on our cut plane here, we can see exactly what's below and what's above our cut plane. So awesome. So this is starting to kind of look and feel a little bit more like, um, you know, a topography. And of course, depending on the shape of that mesh, these can be either, uh, you know, more or less detailed, but let's do a little bit more work on this here as well. So I can actually see we do have that mesh still there. Let's delete that. So I think I may have been deleting lines or features off the mesh and not the mesh itself. So there we go. We've deleted our mesh. Okay, next step here. So I just want to kind of point out that all of these are on a layer that I have set up for site topo lines. Now if we jump into our layer combos, we can essentially turn these so that they are wireframe as one way to really kind of like make this look more like just a, you know, a pure uh, topo lines, if that's our intention. So that's one thing that we can do. Um, another thing that we can do is if we just kind of go back and regenerate this view, we'll go back to our, um, our site plan view to kind of turn those back on. Um, another thing that we can do if we don't want these faces is we can go in and we can actually manually select them. We have actually have to do this one at a time. Um, we can't select them all at once, although we could probably do this. We could grab all these, we could union, union them, and then we should be able to go in and select multiple faces at once. Uh, is it going to let us do it? I don't think so. Okay, so this, if I wanted to just have the lines here, I could go through and clean this up. And we're just going to go through and delete all of these, all these faces so that we're left with just a 3D representation of our topo lines. So this doesn't take too long, but if you had a massive site with a lot of these, then um, it might take a little while. But um, we're working our way up to the top, and we are just going to delete all of those. Now, if we want to clean up these edges a little bit more, we can do the same thing here as well, where we can actually go select our edges. And in this case, we can actually grab multiples. So we're just going to go down the line, and we're just going to delete all of these that... I mean, honestly, this, like, we could leave these. It's not going to make any impact to our 2D view of this. Um, well, actually, it will. It will kind of cut out all these boundaries. Maybe we'll just leave the bottom boundary there. So we can delete all those, and that will kind of start giving us a uh, different representation. If we wanted to delete um, all of these, then we can keep going with that to, like, really just isolate this so that we only have our topo lines. And, of course, down here at the bottom, we still have those topo lines, which... Uh, um, which is fine. So this would be kind of a very much stripped down version of our topography. And um, yeah, that's really what I wanted to show here in this video. So if you ever need to generate uh, topo lines from a mesh that you have created from either individual survey points or potentially by using the, uh, the import uh, surveyor data, um, where is it? I think it's this function right here. Um, that's the surveyor data import. Um, let's show tooltips. Yeah, place mesh from surveyor data. Um, if you use this method, it's going to end up generating a mesh that has a bunch of essentially poly faces and no topo lines. So this would be a way to go in and refine that a little bit so that we uh, can actually generate these topo lines. And now this is kind of like a nice clean uh, morph that's all grouped together and um, yeah, easy to... Uh, to generate and um, easy to manipulate here. So, okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions on how to do this. And um, yeah, we'll catch you on another ContraBim video very soon. Thanks for watching.